say, don't shut up now. <laughs> you had a whole sonnet to perform this morning. Don't be quiet now. Good morning. Well, I don't know what time it is where you are. So good, whatever it is where you are uh, this morning for me. Um, you may or may not hear the birds. Okay, see, I was gonna say, don't shut up now. <laughs> you had a whole sonnet to perform this morning. Don't be quiet now. Um, but no, here I am. I am Christina C. Jones, author of Black Romance, if you are not familiar. And those of you who are familiar may or may not be like, hold up, CCJ. I thought you had said that you were taking a break from all of the content because you were going to be so busy writing books and stuff and et cetera, et cetera. I did say that. I did. But this is what I want to be doing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just here. <laughs> I had an epiphany or 12 while I was away um, with my family on our little vacation some epiphanies of which <laughs> I might share um, and some I might not. Uh, we just have to see how it goes. But ultimately, the reason that that factors in is because I felt like filming. And so that's what I'm doing. But in a bit of classic CCJ fashion, I had no clue what to film. And so I thought, oh, Let's ask the audience. Only like, y'all don't really be talking to me. <laughs> like when I ask stuff like this, y'all don't really be talking to me. Y'all don't really be giving me like a ton. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say, because like I asked on good old Instagram what I should talk about for like a discussion video. Um, and I did get some responses, not a ton, but some. So. We're just gonna get into it. So, <laughs> the first one I got was uh, crazy super fans or how unbothered you are about some bad reviews. All fun, but facts. So, I don't feel like I have any um, like crazy super fans. Like, I don't, I don't, like, I don't really get that. Like, I have peers who have people who like love their work so much that they like harass them about it. Um, I don't really. Like, I don't really typically have that or not that I can pinpoint like one specific person. Like, I will have people who will hop in my inbox with like weirdo stuff. Like, you know, you think you all am? Like, I do have that um, from time to time. Uh, more often than I would like, but you know, who's to dwell on it? But in terms of like positive, I don't know. Like, I think, like, I, I don't know if I just don't have that or if it, I guess doesn't really bother me. You know what I mean? Like I like for people to, you know, to talk to me about my work. I like for people to, you know, when they hop in my inbox and say, oh my God, I'm reading this and I love it. Um, I might not necessarily always be able to give it the energy that it deserves. Like sometimes I have to just kind of acknowledge it and then keep it pushing just because of whatever may be going on with me at the time that I like get the message or whatever. But I do like to, at the very least, you know, I'm always going to acknowledge it, you know, hit you with some hearts or something, which is a lot. It was actually, it's actually a lot more personal than I think it comes across. I think it comes across as impersonal. But when I use them, when I do it, that's not how I mean it. It's like, oh my God, I love this. Thank you so much. It's really like, it's, it's, it's really how I mean it when I do it. But I've realized kind of lately, like, wait a minute, you know, that really can come across kind of impersonal and kind of generic. And so it's something that I want to try to, I guess, do a little better about. And then in terms of bad reviews, like, I think y'all be thinking that I'm fronting when I say that I do not read reviews. Like, I do not read reviews, like, beyond the first day or so like once i see kind of the first ones come in i do not go into my reviews i do not go onto goodreads like i like there was a, a, a while that like i would not even log on to that website uh, but i need to in order to do like admin type of things for my business but there was a while that i was like terrified to log on to this site because people on goodreads like will give you the business and if you're 
you don't even have to be looking for it. Like if you're following, like if you friend people or whatever on Goodreads, it'll just be on your feed. And I've had situations where, you know, I logged onto my feed and like, bam, in my face, I'm getting ripped up in review and, you know, who needs that? And I mean, I'm not in that place anymore. Like I can handle a negative review, but I'm just kind of at a point in my career where the negative reviews are, it's just honestly that person's opinion, like really nothing more, nothing less. Like, I think that I'm in a bit of a, not necessarily weird place with reviews. Um, I don't think that I'm where a lot of people would like for artists to be. Um, with regard to reviews. I think a lot of people who, you know, like I see, this is something that I see a lot, like in film and music critique, like they want, like they want to levy this criticism, right? And then the artist or, you know, the director or whoever just kind of says, oh yes, ma'am, exactly, you're right. <laughs> and it's like, why? I just, I, like, I, it's, it's just not a thing you know, it's just not a thing that I understand. Like you have your opinion on my art and I have my art that I created and that I put out there that I love, you know, and I don't know. I don't know. Like there's this idea that criticism makes your art better, but criticism is a person's opinion. And so if your opinion is that this could be better, and my opinion is that I love that I did it that way, who's right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are you right just because you didn't create it? Like, are you right just just because you? I, I just don't. I just don't understand. I don't, what's the move here? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And so I just, uh, I just tune it out, and I just make the art that I want to make because I, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. Like, I know what. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I, I don't like that. So <laughs> I'm just going to do what I want to do. <laughs> and that's not to say that, that's not to say that I make perfect art. I just, I don't think that I make perfect art. I think I make art that I love. And I think that any changes that are going to happen within my art are going to have to come from within. It's going to have to come from me seeing something that I want to do differently, me seeing something that I want to, you know, develop or change or explore or whatever. It's not going to come because somebody else said, you know, I don't know, what's one of the last reviews I got? One of the last reviews I read was like, there's too much cussing in this. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. The characters got, you know, some characters do, some characters don't. I Look, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's not to say that there's not excellent stuff in reviews or, you know, there's very beautifully written reviews. And I absolutely value, you know, the role of the reviewer in this community because a lot of times, like, that's how our stories get out there. That's how our stories get in front of new people. You know, readers, they, they, they don't know you know, they don't know what they don't know about a new to them author or a different book or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, when a reviewer has a platform and they read your book and they love it, you know, and they tell, they're telling a bunch of people about it, there's absolutely value in that, you know, from that standpoint, I just don't know that I need to do something different with my art because of someone else's opinion on it. You know, and that's just where I'm at. Okay. Another one was my research methods. Um, there, there is no method. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I just seriously can't say that there's like a method necessarily. I just, you know, I don't know how tennis scoring works. And so I'm going to Google it and I'm going to read 10 different articles about it. And I'm not just going to read, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to look at what Wikipedia says and I'm going to look at, you know, an ESPN or a sports center article about it, but I'm also going to look at like opinion pieces about it. I'm going to look at blog posts about it. I'm going to get on YouTube and I'm going to see what commentators have to say. And I'm going to hear from, I'm going to, you know, find videos where players are talking about their feelings on it. And I'm going to read through comments, you know, on the articles to see, you know, what are people saying about this? Like I'm, it's, it's, it really is kind of a deep dive, but I don't know that there's necessarily a method to it. I just like new information. And even sometimes um, 
when it's stuff that I would not be necessarily interested in if it was not for the, 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 the book that I was working on. Like I'm going to deep dive and I'm going to try to get all the information that I can. Um, and even in that, you know, sometimes you can get information on top of information. I guess that's the difference between, you know, like the practical application and research because even sometimes with the research sometimes you don't like you don't always get it right like I'll make mistakes sometimes and I'll be you know I'll send something to my betas and my beta and one of my betas you know might be like hey you know well my daughter does this or I did this for 15 years or my thesis was about this and I don't know if you know like this doesn't strike me as right you know you may want to look at this again and typically they're right <laughs> typically they are absolutely right I am all the way in the wrong because you know you you don't know what you don't know and I'm grateful for that because it gives me the opportunity to like wait okay let me take a step back and figure out where exactly I went wrong. Um, and often where I went wrong is that it, it, it was too much information. <laughs> often I've just taken on so much that I get myself mixed up. And so I try to, you know, I try to pull back and make sure that I'm not doing that. And then often, um, I think that when we get into these research methods and stuff, I think that we get into this place of um, wanting to use everything that we found. And so we end up giving more information than is necessary. And I think that when you figure out how to weave what you found into the narrative in a way that feels seamless, it makes you sound like you're it makes you sound more like you know what you're talking about than if you're just giving a lot, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> let's see. New creative process for your upcoming projects. What project? I, I do not have any idea what you're talking about. That's a lie. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and let me stop, uh, let me stop acting all somber as if, you know, as if, I'm not excited as hell about this project. So I went on this trip and if you guys watched my last video, y'all know I was talking big noise, like big, big noise. Like I'm going to be on this trip and I'm going to write and I'm going to tell these people I live with, you got to leave me alone right now because I'm trying to write. That ain't happen. <laughs> that ain't happen. <laughs> like I did write one day, one morning. Um, but other than that, like I was just too, um, there was not time or space for that. Um, and I just let it flow, you know, like that's totally fine. You know, the idea of getting away was, you know, to kind of take a step back, step into some ease and just let it flow like it was going to flow. And even though I did not really get any writing done so much has been happening in my brain for this book it is turning into something that that really is not what i expected like i knew that there was going to be um like a piece of magical realism to it but i did not know exactly what that piece was going to be but i have it now um I'll save spoilers and stuff for when I go back to, um, for when I go back to that series, but, um, I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. Um, it has some kind of historical elements. It has that magical realism element. Like I mentioned, um, we're going to get some beer talk since it's a night shift book. Um, it's just lots of really, really exciting things. Um, I have, I already have like photo shoot and stuff set up in order to get some custom pictures for this, you know, for the promotional aspect and all of that for this project. I have already reached out to one narrator. I need to talk to the other, but I'm I'm already on I'm already on the schedule anyway, just waiting to say what project I want to do. So, you know, I just really want to have everything really beautifully lined out for this project and I am excited about it. But I am coming up on a decade of publishing. Um, I'm com I first published in 2013 um, and we're halfway through 2021. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting, I'm getting close. Um, I will talk myself out of a good thing. I will overthink myself out of a good thing in a heartbeat. And so 
I used to be in a place where I did not overthink these things and I just let them happen. I just let it flow. I just let it go like it wanted to go. And um, I, it's, it's, it's not that I'm away from that necessarily. Um, it's just that I have to force myself back into that place. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of a constant thing. And I don't want to have to always be forcing myself back into that. I really want that. I really want to get back to that place um, naturally. And what I've started to realize is, is I put a whole lot of pressure on myself to improve and do this better and do that better, um, which is not inherently a bad thing, but there has to be some balance, right? Like there has to be some balance. There has to be some level of contentment. And this is something that um, at risk of telling all my business, but I mean, I'll be transparent with y'all anyway. Y'all already know all my business. So, um, I am incredibly self-critical. Like I'm incredibly self-critical. It's something that I have been over and over and over and over and over and over with my therapist. Um, and <laughs> it manifests itself in, you know, in, in, in this, you know, in, 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 in this writing, um, thing. And I have to be careful not to, I have to be careful not to criticize my way out of giving the project what it deserves, if that makes sense at all. I don't think it makes sense, but I don't know how else to put it. So I'm gonna just let it, I'm gonna just let it be right there. Okay. Your least favorite characters and scenes you've written and why? Um, I don't write characters that I don't like. <laughs> they can't come here. At least not as like main characters. Like if like my like my lead characters, um, there there are characters that I've had like a bit of a difficult time with before I got to know them. Like um, Kingston Whitfield is who <laughs> always <laughs> is who always comes to mind for me. Like I'll say often, you know, it, like in real life I would have tased that man, but really, you know, like stepping outside of the silliness once I got to know him and all, you know, all of my characters, I understood them better. And I think that often, um, I think that often our dislike of certain characters or, you know, even people in real life is often rooted in misunderstanding more than anything. Um, so yeah, in terms of main characters, I, 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 cannot think of anyone that I just do not like. I, I do remember in the past, like way, way back, I remember talking about a character that I was writing and I did not like her. Um, but I can't, for the life of me, I cannot remember who it was. Like I can't, I cannot, like I'm sitting here and like going over my whole catalog in my head and I cannot for the life of me remember who, who it was or why. I call myself not liking her, but I do know that, um, I think that as we mature, um, I think that as we mature as writers and as people, you know, for myself as a woman, um, my relationship to my characters has changed and the way that I relate to people and to characters has changed. I th <laughs> I think that back then, I think that my reader mentality was a little more attuned to what I think the typical, um, what I think the typical thing is. I think that, especially in our community, like in our romance community, um, reader sentiment is skewed towards the hero. Um, and it's skewed toward, um, it's skewed heavily towards grace and understanding for the hero um, and <laughs> judgment and impatience with the heroine. And I think that, um, I think that I was probably in that headspace. Um, I think that I was probably, you know, I think that I was probably in that headspace. It's something that, you know, that I've talked about with my peers quite often actually how um how other women are so hard on other women like so 
unfairly hard on other women and even, you know, even, even in fiction. And it's, it's, it's a thing that I, you know, I hate it. Um, and I don't get it. Like I, and I think that's part of why I hate it because I don't get it, which goes back to, you know, which kind of goes back to the question. Like, you know, when you, it's hard to like something that you don't understand. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 I don't understand. Um, but stepping outside of main characters and leaning, I guess, more into side characters. Um, I don't like abusers. I don't like um, manipulators. I don't like liars. Um, and any scenes that I wrote where I had to deal with those, with, with that type of character, um, is always, uh, is, is always difficult. It's always difficult. Um, and most difficult are scenes where my heroines are having to deal with some type of harassment or abuse. Um, I really hate writing scenes like that. I really hate writing scenes like that. Um, and I avoid it as much as I can. Um, especially any type of like detail. Like I know that the if you can series uh, because it just came out in audio like that's it's it's it's, it's heavy on my mind and I remember probably it's probably my first uh trigger warning that I've ever had to do because in book two of that series there is a very um very vague like it's not it's not detailed at all um it's more hinted towards than anything but um one of the characters um she is she's raped as a young girl um I think she's like 15 or 16 something like that when this happens um I mean for obvious reasons I hated that that was the way that happened um and I'll be in my brain like really bitch <laughs> like this really um but that's what the story is. Um, that's what the story is. And even in telling these fictional stories, I try to like, I try to keep it as real as possible. Like I try to be realistic, even in, you know, even, even, even in the fantasy and even in the imagination of these other worlds and the, with these other people and what their lives might be. Like I tried to keep it realistic and this is, this is a real thing that happens. Like I often see uh, like critiques and stuff of, well, why does this happen in books? And why does that happen in books? Because it happens in real life. Like it happens in real life. And while on some, while on one hand I understand the lack of desire to read about traumatic things happening to women like i definitely get that that you you know that you would prefer not to read it but that doesn't mean that it's not happening i've had far too many women readers reach out to me after reading one of my books saying that they felt seen for me to be like well i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna do this in books because you know who wants to read about that people who've been through it want to read about it people want people who've been through it want to see it treated with nuance and care and that that's the respect that i'm going to give to them like i don't anyway i'm i'm on a tangent <laughs> I'm, I'm good at tangents um but yeah any scenes where i have to deal with with that type of thing. Like, again, I try to treat it with care and nuance and not give it, not give, I think that a lot of times we think that explicit detail makes the writing good. Um, and I don't agree with that. I'm not saying that it makes it bad. I'm just saying that it's not always necessary. And I think that you do have to consider that there might be someone out there who is in exactly the situation that this character is in. How, how do you want that person to feel if they are reading this? Like, I think that that's a consideration that you have to make. And for that reason, even in those scenes like that, 
um, I'm, I'm careful about the level of detail. I'm careful about the level of terror, I guess, that is going to go into it because It is way too early in the morning for y'all to be yelling up the street at each other. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, those scenes, I don't like those. And finally, let me see. Stories that you thought were going one way but took a left turn while you were writing. Um, only every fucking thing I have ever written life <laughs> none of it goes um the way none of it goes exactly the way that I thought it was going to go um when I'm writing including what I'm working on now like the way this storyline came about was I was talking to Nicole Falls and she was asking me these questions like these leading questions of you know well, what kind of thing do you want to write? And like, what mood is it going to be? And where do you think something like that would be said? And what kind of people do you think that, you know, you want to write about? And I was answering these questions, you know, I want to write something, you know, that's kind of sexy, fun. Um, and I want to write people who are, you know, not really looking for love, but also not necessarily heartbroken um like in the midst of the story and I think I want to do something in Blackwood and et cetera et cetera et cetera and she's asking me these questions and as I'm like kind of mentally diving into these questions I you know the story is forming in my mind like details and stuff are forming in my mind and so, <laughs> so some of it you know like some of it is it's still going to be, you know, what it is. Um, it's still going to be said in Blackwood, but I don't know about the other stuff. <laughs> like it, it, it will still be sexy. It will still be sexy. Um, I don't know how fun, um, I don't know about fun. Um, and it's, it's probably, I, I won't say it's definitely not going to be a novella. I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to be, but it's definitely not going to be the length that I was first thinking because I was thinking like a cute little novelette or something. And I don't think this is going to be that, but it's going to be what it's going to be. It's, it's, it's just going to be what it's going to be. Um, another, <laughs> another notable example, um, of this from something that I've already, you know, something that's already out. I keep going back to Auntie Up, but that's just what it is. Auntie Up. <laughs> So if you've read Auntie Up, you know that Auntie Up um, was what I would call my first toes into like what the kids call dark romance. Um, it's not that dark. It's not it's, it's, it's not that dark, but it's definitely like grittier um, and darker in tone than, you know, than anything that I had done thus far. And yeah like it is very much alpha male very serious lots of angst and tension and danger and etc 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 right let me tell y'all about how <laughs> Antia was supposed to be like I don't want to say a rom-com, but it was definitely going to be like a little sexy, fun, you know, fun, flirty poker player, you know, with the bad boy casino, you know, casino owner's son and just very light and fluffy and sexy and I, none of that happened. <laughs> <laughs> None of that happened. <laughs> um, the point of it all, the point of it all, um, that book when at f when it first started was going to be called You Had Me at Pino. 
and that was going to be a rom-com there was definitely not going to be any of like the seriousness that um that it takes on because it, i mean it takes place in sugar valley and all the sugar valley books are going to deal with like grief and mourning <laughs> and you know all those different type of elements um so yeah, we, we, we didn't end up with a rom-com there either, did we? So yeah, I am definitely no stranger to left turns um, when writing, but what I have discovered is, is that you just have to go with it. You really just have to go with it. Like you cannot be, you know, you cannot be so stuck on yourself and so stubborn that you cannot let the story go where it's trying to lead you. Um, because like, let's really think about it. Like what's like, like, what is the reason that you don't want to let the story go where it's showing you that it wants to go? What, why don't you trust yourself and trust your gut to tell you this is where this story is supposed to be going? And yes, it's a shift from what we thought was going to happen, but let's be real. What we thought was going to, what we thought was going to happen doesn't have really any bearing or really any... I guess, point <laughs> to it. Like, why does it matter so much that the story wants to take a left turn? Like, why, why does it matter so much? And it matters so much because we like to hear ourselves talk, right? Like, that's, <laughs> like for real, that's, 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 that's really what it is. We think we're right. And so it's like, no, I already decided this. I already decided that this is how it was going to go. But this is going somewhere else and I don't like it. And so I'm going to dig my heels in. But what do you really gain from digging your heels in? Like, where, do, where, where what does that get you? It don't get you nothing. Like, that's, there, there ain't nothing but pain down that road. So, just take the left. <laughs> just, just take the left. <laughs> so, I've been running my mouth a while. Um, and this is about to be a long video, so. I'm, 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 I'm gonna stop. Um, that was the last, that was the last question anyway. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed this um i'm gonna do this again but i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna have to figure out a way how to get y'all to like like give me some stuff give me you know give me more because i do like doing things like this and um yeah we're, we're just gonna see how it goes i know that i said well i'm gonna stop everything you know in order to write and etc 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 but I, I i i don't know i don't know um i am leaning more towards just leaning back into doing what I want to do when I want to do it and we I'm just gonna see how it goes from there how about that? <laughs> but anyway I got coffee to drink I got words to write I got a video to edit now so I'm going to go ahead and let this go as always thank you for tuning in I've been CCJ you've been you and hopefully we're gonna we're gonna continue to be them people bye